Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Ali Faikal bin Al Zahari. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Hafizin Arif bin Tajiri. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Haris bin Iman Jai. Hi, my name is Muhammad Nabi bin Muhammad Usaid.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Alif Haikal bin Azhari. Uh, okay, after the demonstration procedure of lab 4, we will now present about the objective, data finding, experiment result, condition of this break part, question, lastly conclusion. Okay, now I'll proceed uh, to objective. Okay, the first objective in this lab, to inspect the condition of this brake assembly. And the second one is to replace part of this brake system. And thirdly, to name all parts of this brake assembly. Okay, for data findings. Okay, there are 14 parts uh, in brake this system, which is number one is lock pin. Number two, guide pin. Number three, inner bush. Number four, mounting bracket. Number five, uh, rubber bush. Number six is piston, piston ring, yeah, piston ring. Number seven, piston boots. Uh, number eight, the piston. Nine is, uh, which is piston seal. And ten, and number ten is uh, the caliper of this brake. And number 11 is outboard, they call it outboard brake shoe. Number 12, inboard brake shoe. And 13 is, they call it shim. And 14 is a uh, pad clip, brake pad clip. Yeah. Okay, now we pass to next presenter, experiment result. Okay, next, uh, I will continue. Uh, my name is Muhammad Jeffrey Bin Sufyan. So I will continue the experiment result. So the inspection we do is uh, first, uh, the first is run out measurement. So uh, we run out uh, with the uh, die gauge and we got 0 0.04 millimeter. And then uh, we go to the D thickness measurement. So we have marking six point on the disc. Uh, thickness measurement. So the first result is 26.62 millimeter and then uh, second 20 21.52 millimeter and then number three is 21.67 and number four uh, 21.73 and number five 21.74 and number six last is 21.50 mm. So <clears throat> after that we uh, continue to the rap test. So, uh, in the rap test uh, inspection result, we get the uh, brake pad is uneven surface. So, we need to change the brake pad. And then, <clears throat> the last is we do the inspection of guide pin and lock pin straightness. So, we roll the guide pin and the lock pin on the uh, flat table and we get the Guide pin is straight, has no sign of deformation or dented. So this is for the inspection. Next. So next, I will continue about the condition of this brake part. <clears throat> so this is the disc brake surface. So the condition of this brake surface is good condition in appearance, but even uneven surface. Next. Uh, next, the condition of outboard uh, brake shoe. So also same, the condition is uh, uneven surface, need to replace to a new one. And then next, and the third uh, part is inboard brake shoe. So inboard brake shoe, uh, pad, <clears throat> we, get, we got the condition also same like the first, uh, uneven surface, I need to replace to a new one. And then uh, number four is the piston. So the piston, have a good condition. Next, uh, the cylinder bore. So the cylinder bore uh, for the piston, uh, we get the good condition uh, for the cylinder bore. And next, I will pass to my friend uh, Muhammad Nabil bin Muhammad Saini for the questions. All right. Uh, thank you to Mr. JP. So. I'm going to proceed with question. 
So the question one, based on your finding, what is the condition of break pad? Should it be replaced with new pad or not? Okay, so the result that we have uh, taken from the inspection is that the allowable thickness of a brake pad is from 3 to 6 mm. So based on the inspection result, the thickness of the outboard brake shoe is 6.68 .6 mm and inboard brake shoe is 7.21 mm. So the surface of the brake pad has no crack and based on the chuck test, uh, we found out that both of the brake pad surface is unevenly contact with the brake retour. Uh, brake rotor. So uh, this shows that uh, the brake surface is uneven and proves that the brake pad needs to be replaced to a new one. Alright, so next uh, proceed to the second question. Alright, so the next question is list two causes of rotor thickness variation. So what is the correct repair procedure of thickness variation? So the this rotor thickness variation is caused by an excessive lateral runout. Lateral runout is the amount of side to side movement of the rotor as it rotates. So either way, this variation causes by the irregular brake friction material uh, pattern. So the uneven clamping force can also cause uh, rotor thickness variation if the brake pad is made of abrasive material. So in this case, uh, the correct way to repair uh, the correct repair procedure uh, by cleaning the rust on the wheel hub. So other way is to skim the surface of the rotor. Alright, so we're going to proceed to the next two question, uh, which which will be uh, by my friend. Alright, next. Okay, thank you, Muhammad Abil. Uh, my name is Muhammad Fizin, and I will continue for the third question. What do you understand about round out measurement data? From the experiment, we run out measurement data to get the high spot of brake rotor. From the data we found, use dial gauge to obtain the high spot on the brake rotor. By place the dial gauge at the contact point of rotor and then rotate the disc rotor. Then, we can see the dial gauge shown the reading and we can figure out where the place of high spot of brake rotor. Next. For the fourth question is, what is your finding for the guide pin, lock pin straightness check? What can happen to your disc brake system if guide pin and lock pin is not straight? Okay, now guide pin and lock pin is still in good condition and still not bent. Both can evenly smoothly roll on a flat surface. If the guide pin and lock pin not straight, uh, it could experience uh, noises and problem when apply forces on the brake rotor. And if the calipers are not contacting the rotor at the right angle, the brake may stick or grab while driving, or you may hear a scratching noise. That's all for the questions. Uh, continue to for the conclusion. Okay, thank you, Muma Fizinari. So I will present about the conclusion. So the con the conclusion for this lab is this lab activity has given us the opportunity to study one of the integral parts in the brake system of a vehicle. In this lab session, we are able to inspect the condition of this brake assembly. We also have learned and get to know to reach replace and inspect parts of this brake assembly. Lastly, we also have successfully named all parts of the disc brake assembly. As one of the parts in the braking system, studying the disc brake assembly is one step further to understand the braking system and to gain competency over them. So that's all from us. Thank you 